Universe all y'all's preview kind of trek around the state region by region. We've got Lamar Gafford of Senla Preps. Uh, I'm Jared Rose with this Louise Universe all y'all and Lamar is longtime sports writer in the area. Uh, I mean, really great handle on the 318 as a guy that you know comes from up there in Shreveport and has been down in in Senla for years and and covers that region really closely with his Senla Preps website, which everybody should go check out if you want to know some more about these teams as the season approaches. And Lamar I appreciate you taking some time in, in August as as this season does approach to kind of chop it up about what you're seeing from some of these teams getting ready for 2024. Absolutely. And I appreciate being here uh, with you too, Jared. I know we've been trying to get this going for the uh, last couple of years and everything, but, you know, finally glad to get, finally be on here with you and get a chance to talk football. Um, it's a great time, man. It's a great time. I can't wait. Yeah, it is fast approaching, and we'll kind of jump in and and go class by class and talk about the 5A schools on down to 1A, and and there's definitely some excitement starting right at the top. When you look at 5A, um, you know, a little bit outside of the Alexandria, Pineville area, uh, you know, just up the interstate, you've got Natchitoches Central, who's up with all of the Shreveport schools now in Division uh, or District 1 5A, and then in District 2 5A, you've got Alexandria, who – uh, came together as the season went along last year and was kind of peaking at the right time to make a deep playoff run. Uh, they and Pineville are in the mix with a lot of those Northeast Louisiana teams, the Monroe based teams and, you know, a, a reigning state champion in, in Ruston. When you look at that group and I think probably particularly those Ash Trojans, uh, what are you seeing from some of the potential of the five A schools from your region of the state? Yeah, I really feel like at of those the five A teams that we have here, I feel like Ash is probably the best one for sure. Um, not just only of the five A schools, but also of all the teams that we have here in Sinlock. Got a chance to see them on, on Wednesday, and they look like a well-oiled machine. Um, obviously, JT Lindsay, the LSU commit, um, he looks pretty good. Um, they're going to have a good offensive line around him, so that's going to give him the opportunity to make plays. But they also got other players like Darius Washington, a receiver that can also break loose and make some plays as well. And they have a solid defense that can do the same thing. Maybe the only thing, the only question mark that they may have is that quarterback obviously with a sophomore battle trying to figure out who's going to be to come the quarterback there and who's going to get their first reps and um, being quarterback, and especially against a very, very tough schedule that starts off with Acadiana during the scrimmage and Sterlington during the jam and everything. But I think that this is the team to beat with so many skill players and also um, good players as well, role players as well, that can really get them to at least a deep run in the playoffs once again. To to be at a point where we're talking about Alexandria as, as a notable team in 5A year in, year out, I mean, just the job that Coach Bachman has done over the years since he's been there and now – you go into a season, you have a couple of sophomores battling for that quarterback spot, as you mentioned, and you're in a district that is one of the toughest districts in, in any region of the state, any classification in the state. I mean, what can you say about the job that Coach Bachman and that staff has done and, and how are they feeling knowing that they're you know going into what is the way they schedule always, always a gauntlet um, with some guys that are going to have to step up quickly? It's very commendable. Um, you know, he has done this thing pretty much built this thing up from the ground up ever since he took over in 2016. And, you know, there were times where it kind of looked like that, you know, it kind of looked a little shaky a little bit there here and there, obviously making it to the playoffs, but also being one and done. But he got the kids, he got the program to kind of believe and build up upon the way. I think um, when they got to the second round a couple of years in 2018 and also in 2019, I think that got them really starting to believe. And then especially when 2020, when they played against Acadiana in the championship game and came within a two-point conversion of possibly winning a state championship. Um, those things there really helped them out. Well, really help out this program and really helped out the team and everything. But then also you got you got a chance to see some of these guys that go on to the next level, like a Bud Clark going to TCU, like a Jacobian, uh, Jacobian Guillory at LSU, like a shield Taylor at Stanford right now that a lot of kids get a chance to see, wow, this is the place I really want to be at. If I not just only can go on and possibly play in a deep playoff run where I can at least play Thanksgiving football, but also go on to the next level 
at a pretty high school and with the opportunity of possibly playing in the NFL one day. So um, it, it's been very commendable. My hat goes off to him based off of that. And, you know, it's been one of those things that he has really set out since day one. What do folks need to know about the other two teams that we mentioned, Pineville and Natchitoches Central, maybe in terms of just big picture where they are right now? And if, if folks around the state just want to know, you know, where where they stand as as programs going into these tough districts, um, what kind of the, the outlook is for those guys or overarching storylines? I know it's going to be very tough for them, but uh, I'll start off here with Nagata Central. Obviously, you now have Brad Laird coming back into the high school coaching ranks, who was a very good coach at uh, Ruston. And after uh, that stint over there at NSU that he had, um, now he's still in Natchitoches. So he's getting the opportunity to probably uh, go back to his roots a little bit. I think he has a good quarterback in Owen Smith, who was the quarterback last year for them. Um, now, and of also trying to build up uh, like some skill players around him that can util- uh, that can add on to that. Natchitoches has also been has always been a team that can, has had a solid defense, has had some good athletes. And, and all that, and if they can try to compete in that one five bay district, I know it's going to be now tough with, you know, Huntington coming over, obviously with their high-flying offense, and then, of course, you having a uh, Evangel coming over as well. I know it's going to be a little bit tough right there, but they have shown that they can compete with those teams over the past couple of years, so it's going to be very interesting. I know for Pineville, uh, the road gets a little bit tougher now for them I mean, you swap out West Washita, and now you get no. And I know this is very tough right there for them, but they do have some skilled players. Uh, Jacob Miranda definitely is a guy that everybody should watch out for. They have a decent offensive line that that can that can do pretty well. Um, Bryant Bell has done the best with um, less, obviously with the um, with the stuff that they may have as far as like uh, against the, all the other teams there, and so. They're going to always go out there and have that lunch pail mentality that they're going to try to give it their all. Um, I know it's going to be very tough for them, but if they can at least do well in the none district slate, I think that's going to be the one thing here that's going to give them the momentum probably just to get a playoff spot, hopefully. So we'll see. That trade-off that you mentioned of Neville coming up and West Wachita uh, going down to 4A again, the flip side of that is District 2-4A. Now the Senla teams, Grant, Peabody, and Tioga, have still Franklin Parish and still, you know, Wasman in, in the mix. But instead of Neville, the district suddenly opens wide up um, for everybody with, with West Washtenaw, who has been a solid team. But Neville has for decades been one of the steadiest programs in the state. When you look at the, the outlook for Grant, Peabody, and Tioga, what kind of catches your eye about those teams and now – you know, seemingly a really good opportunity in 2-4-A. And ironically, I got a chance to talk to all three coaches this past week, and they said the same thing. Wow, it's, o- it's now open here. and Now the, the big bad wolf is now gone there. But, you know, they also said the same thing about they can't overlook a team like Wasman, who's coming up now into the uh, from 3-A to 4-A now, and especially with um, Terrence Kehi giving the opportunity to really improve that team over there. Um, it's going to be pretty interesting to see here because obviously Grant has been a solid team over the last couple of years. I know they took a little bit of a step back, but um, Jarvis Felton has had this team and, and and is willing to get get this team opportunity to do pretty well. I think they got a kid that's a, um, that played baseball that's going to be their quarterback this season, and they got some skilled players, at least on the defensive side, that's going to really help them out this year. Uh, Tioga is going to be a little bit of a step back, I think, for them. Uh, Caleb Andrews now goes to Acadiana. That's a big mm-hmm. blow for their team. But um, Coach Cook said that he has a sophomore linebacker that they feel pretty high on, that eventually he'll get to Andrews' level. But it's just now you have to replace a guy that could have possibly been one of our top players in the area um, from go. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do from there. But I think Peabody – as far as everything, I think they may have the horses, no pun intended, <laughs> to also <laughs> to also uh, at least compete in that district there. I feel like it could come down between them and Wasman, depending on what Franklin Parish may have. But I think it could come down between them and Wasman, and especially with the um, 
the growth of Larry Roberts and then also TJ Hullaby um, for him to throw the ball to. So I'm interested in seeing that. And then in 3A, you have, I, I mean, a, a great group there and just kind of listing through the teams to start out with Bolton, Buckeye, Bunky, Caldwell Parish, Gina, Marksville, and Vidalia. And so you have in that mix, Bunky that came on so strong last year. Gina has been, I mean, a, a top program in its classification in recent years. Marksville, I really, I, I don't know a ton about them in the trenches, but love a lot of the talent they have from, you know, skill position DB type group. And you got some great rivalries in that 2-3A district as well. Uh, you know, set the stage of, of what we should be expecting from the district 2-3A teams. Yeah, I think this will be a competitive district as well. I mean, I feel like, again, Bunky's probably going to be the best team in that district. But it wouldn't shock me if um, the other five teams like Caldwell, Gina, Marksville, or Buckeye may have something to say about that. Um, it's just from top to bottom. Like you said, Jared, I mean, it's it's um, big, big rivalries between those schools. Um, you know what you're going to get from night in, night out against those teams. Bunky, obviously, with Compton, with Dylan Compton, and then also uh, Kyle Johnson, definitely is going to be the, the the team to beat there. But then, of course, you got Gina. Jay Roark has always done a very solid job with that team there, that even though they lose a guy like Zarek Jones, they're still going to be very competitive, and they're not going to go away anytime soon. Marksville's an intriguing team, obviously, to me, because now you get Devin Lavalade back, uh, um, back from being out missing his freshman year kids a good athlete he played um basketball last year but they were going to start him as a freshman uh last year before the injury and i think that that gives them one extra um wrinkle there as far as like a, a an athlete that can help them out especially with uh monk prior and then also elijah murray speedy guys that they have there and they're going to have a lot of speed out there on the field at all times uh buckeye you know, of course, you lose Adam Brodnax at quarterback, but um, they have another quarterback that's willing and ready. Um, and I think his last name is Grimmett. That's going to uh, help them out as far as the season. Uh, he comes from the baseball field as well. They feel like that he can spin it pretty well. And of course, um, I feel like with Aaron York coming over there from St. Mary's, they're still kind of going to do the same things as far as like throwing the ball, they're not going to go back to really the triple option and stuff, but they're still going to continue the pace that they have. Hayden Boone and also um, uh, Jim Burlew, I think those are also two other guys that they're going to have uh, as well. And then Caldwell, they're always an enigma here, but they always play hard. They always play tough. Um, they have had a good offensive line over the last couple of years. You lose Eli Head, that's going to be tough. But I think they've always had a good offensive line. They're going to play good physical uh, style of football. And, of course, the games that they always like to go up for is like the uh, the Genas and everybody else. And they just like that district. I mean, I know they're closer to Monroe, but they, they love that district. They love playing in that district because of the rivalries and everything. So, interested in seeing. Yeah, when you – I mean, when you look at some of the the – districts up in in your area you've got some teams like that like a Caldwell that is a little bit further spread out and could really go either direction and there's some of that when we start to look at some of these these two-way districts as well that I know you have eyes on three two-way and five two-way and, and some of the storylines might be similar in terms of um, some smaller town physical and and strong tradition programs in in three two-way uh kind of up there in between Shreveport and Alexandria. The group is Lakeside, Mansfield, Manny, who I know is a program, you know, super well covering the area for years and, and you know, everything that Jess Curtis and those guys did. Um, and now the kind of the, the rebranding a little bit in some ways, the last couple of years and throwing the ball around a little bit more um, that group, Red River and Winfield. And then in district five, two way of oils, uh, Menard, Kinder, Oakdale and Port Barry in terms of, some of the top teams to watch for you from a Senla perspective, who stands out of, of the two A group? Yeah, two A is going to be fun and, and interesting too, because I think um, you know there's a lot of a lot of changing, obviously, in that group there. I, I think Manny's. I, I'll still give them a puncher's chance there. I don't know a lot about the new guys that they have coming up, but obviously Dylan Barrett has done a very good job when he was at Grant. 
Um, who would have thought that he would take Grant to like a team where they would have seven and eight wins and all that. Right. And I think his first year in, at Manny, he showed what he can do. So now trying to build up a culture um, and trying to help them out. At least there, if there's always going to be buy-in there. So I think there's going to be interest um, with that. Winfield's always going to be a team that's going to try to compete against them. Um, you know, Tank Lewis, I think, is the, the quarterback that they have there. Um, you know, getting the chance to talk to Jay Watson with them. Um, they really want to try to get him more in space. So he may not play quarterback this year, but they'll probably shift him and move him all around. What really hurt Winfield last year was injuries. Um, and they had a lot of injuries. Eli Little got hurt. And, you know, and of course they had to just, they had to basically replay, re- repair their team on the fly. And that's kind of the reason why they kind of took a little bit of a step back. And then, of course, the 5 2A districts. Um, I think if if I take a look at anybody here that I feel like, based on the continuity that they have, I feel like Avoz is probably going to be the better team of my um, three in that district there because uh, Kevin Jones, I think, is a solid cornerback, and he's going to be a guy that in that parish, a lot of people are talking about, obviously, the Bunky guys and obviously the Marksville guys, but this is another guy that I feel like that they need to talk about too because he's going to be a lockdown corner. And, um, you know, I think Vols is – they don't have to worry about that hard schedule that they had last year where they had the places against Southern Lab, LCA, and Turlings, but they get a much more manageable schedule. And I think playing against those teams last year, that helped them out, but I think uh, playing against some other teams that are, they're going to be more comparable against – is going to help them out as far as their wins. And it's going to really uh, give them even more confidence going into the season. Uh, Menard has lost some of the guys that they had, but they're always going to play hard. Obviously with David Perkins coming in there as a defensive coach, he's going to be as as animated as a defensive coach as you're going to think that he is. And of course, as we always talk about uh, Caldwell being an enigma, uh, Oakdale is always an enigma too, uh, but they always, they always have a good season where you know that they're going to be five and five, six and four. They're going to run the ball pretty hard, and they're always going to have an athlete or two that's going to get them over the edge. And similarly, you've got a, a couple of of districts, I guess, in uh, in div- division. I keep mixing up district division <laughs> a class. We all in, are. <laughs> in, and we're not even talking about the the postseason divisions yet, where all these teams may end up you know, they end up shifting and going into different groups in terms of the playoff honors. But uh, in class 1A, District 2-1A is, is kind of that, a, a lot of it is is the middle ground between Yall and Monroe, again, with Block, Delhi, Delta Charter, General Trash, St. Frederick, and Tensaw. And for you, probably more so looking at District 3-1A, uh, Lakeview, LaSalle, Logansport, Montgomery, Northwood, Lena, and St. Mary's, where obviously Logansport is a, is a long ways away for – for you more up to the Shreveport area, St. Mary's right there in Natchitoches though, those two programs have been kind of the, the top two teams to watch in terms of a, a statewide perspective from that group. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on, on St. Mary's this year and, and the one, a schools that you have your eyes on overall? I feel like St. Mary's will take a step back this season. I mean, they had a big soft, a senior class last year that they um, got them to Thanksgiving football as well. But uh, I think they're going to take a little bit of a step back. Um, I'm interested in seeing what Kiedra Sistrunk is going to do in his first job. Um, obviously, he knows the uh, he knows the Natchitoches area very well after having been a coach at Natchitoches Central and now at St. Mary's. And now I'm interested in seeing what he does in his first uh, job there. Um, St. Mary's is always going to be scrappy. They're always going to play hard. They're always going to go into do pretty well. But I think they're going to take a step back. And it would not surprise me if they be more like 500 and more of a first round casualty this year. Cause I just think, um, you know, I just think that it's going to, like I said, they're not going to, they're not going to get that same stuff, but it's just going to be after that. Um, can they build up something going on for it? I think in the district, a better team in the district would probably be uh, Montgomery where last season, you know, they came in having had a long losing streak and even losing their first two games. Um, they went quickly from a team that had a 17-game losing streak 
We didn't know what was going to happen to them, to a team having a five-win season and everything. And, yeah, you don't have Brian Williams, the longtime coach that's there anymore, but his son Taylor's coming in there and now stepping in there. And so I don't think there's that going to be that much change when it comes down to – um, everything that 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 they that the coaching styles and everything else like that. Uh, Jacorian Shepherds is a guy that I think they're looking at this year that can be a good running back and a good athlete for them. They're going to lean towards them him a little bit. And Montgomery feels like that they could probably be finished in at least in the top half of that district um, and give you know Logan Sport a good chance in that district. Even though I know Logan Sport um, has graduated some guys in that in there. You know, I think after that, uh, LaSalle is going to be LaSalle. I mean, they changed coaches as well. Um, I think they could probably finish fourth in that district. And then after that, obviously, it's going to be um, Lakeview and Northwood, where Lakeview, you know, you go from Andy Boone to now uh, Lawrence Seawood there. But um, I think they've always had good athletes. And the same thing for Northwood is just getting them to come over there and getting them to buy in. But I think um, – I think that that matchup would be interesting. And also for them dropping from 2A to 1A, I think that'll be a little bit um, interesting for them where they don't have to worry about the face against the Mannies and, and, and Mansfields and all those schools anymore. Um, so there's that. Um, the th- the four, I get the 2 1A one because I you knew it used to be 4 1A. <laughs> but um, the 2 1A teams, I think Block and um, Delta, Block is trying to. Um, you know, get better and everything else like that. So, of course, it's going to be a little bit of a long way for them. Delta, interesting to see um, does Tyron Singleton, what type of role does he play on the team this year? Um, I know he was a wide receiver last year um, with his uh, with his brother, I think, um, the, uh, the other Singleton that they had, Javari. But um, does he get more quarterback reps where he can have free reign as far as, like, running the ball around? Or do they have somebody that's does that does that for him, so he can get the ball in open space? Um, but if they could, uh, they they showed that they could run rely on one player last year. But I think um, if they can do the same thing, they'll probably have just as amount of success in that in that district right there. Because um, you know, I think there's not a lot of teams in that district that can really get to them. But I think uh, they'll probably have a chance of probably finishing somewhere in the top half of that district too. Yeah, that that district will be really interesting because you have St. Frederick that is, has been for years so used to having to deal with OCS or Oak Grove or both and whatnot, and and they're in there now. But St. Fred's has to replace a lot of guys who have headed elsewhere. General Trass has kind of come on in, in recent years, and I, I don't know as much about what they have uh, right now coming back, but that, that district – has a chance to be fairly open, I feel like, uh, compared to what you know some of those 1A districts have been in recent years. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's going to be better than the district that they had last year uh, when you just had, you know, Sicily Island, Block, um, also Delta. But then you also had, you know, Dale High, Dale High Charter and and some of the other teams there. So I think it's going to be pretty interesting. You add those two teams in there. Trash has had at least some um, some 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 good seasons um, in recent years past. And like you said, about St. Fred. Um, they've always been a very hard team, but yet uh, when with Andy Robinson now going to Neville, it's going to be interesting to see what they do right there. I've always enjoyed to see them play and I always enjoyed to see him uh, coach, but I think uh, it gives them a little bit of infusion there, but it is still going to be very interesting regardless. Well, there you go. That kind of wraps up some of these uh, Senla teams we wanted to, to keep eyes on. And Lamar, again, appreciate some of your time here in August to kind of break it all down for folks around the state that certainly don't know as much about that area as you, kind of shedding the light on it. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. And you know what? Hey, all season, I'm here. And so uh hope to do this again. Yeah, likewise, man. Um, I would love to do – I was telling – I think it was Jake Martin up in uh, Monroe that if, if we could start doing more things like like these, catching up with, with each other around the state uh, throughout the season, certainly, you know, come playoff time when everybody's starting to see teams from other areas and, and whatnot, it'd be a lot of fun. Um, again, he's he's Lamar Gafford from Senlot Preps, Jet Rose of Louisiana versus all y'all. Uh, thanks again to Lamar, and thanks, everyone, for watching. Appreciate y'all.